Amira, can you hear me? I can hear everybody now. Thank you. <laughs> Hear the angels. <laughs> yeah, we're good. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here and being patient and um, coming into this space with us tonight. I'm really super excited. So um, I just want to start by introducing the amazing Mary Lamondo, who I have known now for, oh, we're pushing the decades. Okay, there's a numerous one. <laughs> And, and I met Mary on my very first trip. She was one of the guides the hosting the trip. And Mary is a 25-year uh, astrologer, professional astrologer. She is a, an amazing Egyptologist, having been with her several times, and also um, a healer. Aren't, aren't you a hypnotist also, Mary? Well, I do regressions, but I, I don't call it a hypnotist because sometimes that gets people a little... Yeah. So being an Egyptologist, having lived in Egypt, having studied in Egypt, and having a house in Egypt, I think qualifies her as an over-the-top, an amazing metaphysical teacher and guide for all of us. So thank you, Mary, for all that thank you do. And uh, that, that trip that I met Amir on was, was so much fun. I can't believe that it was that long ago. It feels like yesterday like like they all do but um i just want to say that i i had to switch over to my cell phone not my computer so i can't see everyone that's on the call until they talk so um whoever's out there thank you for coming i love you and um as you talk i'll get to see who you are so anyway okay so um I don't, I know Shirley, and there's a lot of new faces for me. I know that we haven't met yet, and I'm not sure if you came through the link on my website or if you've heard me on, on, a, on a podcast or something recently. I've been around. So um, what we'd like to start by just introducing ourselves, maybe while there's still some people coming in, if you could give us your name and where you're located, perhaps maybe if you've been to Egypt before and what has drawn you to this particular trip and maybe how you heard about the trip. So um, I'm gonna start with my dear friend, Shirley, to my <laughs> left. I, I can see you, so I'm gonna call on you if that's okay, right? Sure. Okay, uh, Shirley, it looks like you're enjoying the sunshine out there in a field. This is one of my favorite walks. It's a protected marsh area in San Rafael, California, near San Francisco. And um, it's an absolutely gorgeous day, big billowy clouds and stuff. And um, I saw Amira on the Jeff Mara podcast. I don't know if any of you have seen that show, but so many amazing stories. And um, I, I've just always, like a lot of you probably have been drawn to Egypt and it just fascinates me. And uh, I mean, it's, it's just an exotic, amazing trip, and I'm, I'm still keeping my mind open about being able to go. Uh, and um, I'm just looking forward to hearing about the astrology, hoping that by attending the meeting, something will fall into place and I can go. So, hi. Great. Thank you, Shirley. And hi, and I'm going to come to you, Jamie. Hey, actually, I'm Linda. I don't know how to oh. check. How come, yeah, your name says Jamie. So thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for being here. Oh, um, thank you. Um, got Mary's email, and uh, I, am. I was in Egypt with Mary last October. Well, last November, we spent Thanksgiving looking at the Nile, and it was amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm having a hard time hearing you, Linda. I met Lane on the trip, and we would have one of my favorite memories. You know, is we would thank you. And where do you live, Linda? I can't hear you. Somebody needs to mute their phone. That's me. Okay. I live outside of Nashville in Gallatin, Tennessee. Beautiful, beautiful. And so how how did you experience Egypt with Mary? It was it was surreal. It was 
it was just, I can't, I don't have words. It was amazing. It was incredible. Yeah. Every step of the way, right? Yes. Yeah. Magic every, around every corner, under, around every column, <laughs> never yeah. mind corner. Yeah. At the pause of the Sphinx, just us for a couple hours was just meditating the energy. Just, it was heart touching. Yeah. We're going to talk, Mary's going to talk about that in a little bit about our journey step by step through through the um through the trip so thanks so much for highlighting that because yeah i think it's pretty special too yes yeah okay i'm gonna go to you henriette do you prefer henriette versus mizada mizada is my first name okay well i apologize thank you mizada well i am in sunny south florida and uh, I met with Mary yesterday. I'm excited. I'm being very attracted to Egypt. Um, I, I mean, don't know why. So that's why I'm here to explore. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And welcome. And thank we you. have Lane. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I went to Egypt three times now and the last time was last November with Mary and I met Linda and Paula who's on the call hey Paula hey Paula and it was amazing it, it, that was the best trip I've ever been on Mary really knows how to do an Egypt trip like truly deeply amazing and I you're new to me Amira so oh. I don't know Mary told me about the call and I definitely would love to hear what you guys are going to do together yeah so. well Mary you know was sort of my launching pad into Egypt and I've been 13 times so there's something yeah. about Egypt that keeps calling you back yes Just when you think you're done there's another trip so no no yeah Egypt. you know yeah we're, we're going to talk more about the details of the trip but having the experience of going, you know, that there are some trips that just don't get a white glove treatment like we hope yes. to deliver. So, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is five star all the way and yeah. deeply spiritual also. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because you can take off some stars, but at the end of the day, we are from the stars. So how could it be anything but the top of the stars, right? And that was amazing to have like such wonderful accommodations and great organization, but also have enough private spiritual time at each place. That was something I found lacking on my other tours. And uh, yeah, there's so definitely- You traveled with Mary one time and the other previous times were with some. So your great experience to share and compare. I mean, that's like, what do they call that? Um, consumers report for Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really important because I traveled by myself because I was living in Dubai. I went over to Egypt a couple of times and I'll tell you what, those times that I did that were just vacant for me. You know, they didn't have the, the connection and, and the, I want to say the, the light they didn't carry the light that our groups are creating and holding while we travel or walk through Egypt. So, so thanks for that. That's really key, I think. And where are you located, Lane? I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Desert. I love it too. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And Paula, we're going to come to you now. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, I uh, live in upstate New York, and I always said that when I get to Egypt, it's the only trip I'll take is with Mary. Uh, I met her on a Peruvian trip to Machu Picchu, and uh, whether I make it this year, next year, whatever, I want to go, I'm going to go. I uh, just don't know exactly when that's going to happen now, and uh, I just think that it's an amazing it would be an amazing journey with her and mary i love you and you look beautiful yeah like always <laughs> yeah good to see you too paul it's been a while <laughs> it's been a long time 
long time. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite myself because I just tested positive uh, two days ago. And so I'm, I'm kind of down for the count right now. Oh, you're positively alive and you're going to be positively fine. I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries there. We're all about magic and creating mystery miracles. Thanks. <laughs> I know if you're not feeling right. Yeah, I'm not quite right. So. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. And Paula, we're going to come to you now. Do we have two Paulas? Yes. Yep. Isn't that unusual? Wonderful. It is so noisy here, Amira. Okay. It's so noisy and I'm the one that wasn't muted. So I, I type okay. I type my hellos in the chat, but I'm okay. just dying to hear what okay. everyone well, has to say. Tell us where you're from. I'm from Boston. And I went to Egypt in November with Mary, and it's lovely to see you, Mary, and like Lane, and Linda, and uh, yeah, it's your whole crew, huh? Yeah, the whole crew it was amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. What was the highlight for you, if there could be one? Oh my goodness, um, a couple of things. I think being in the Great Pyramid our private time there in the king's cha queen's chamber in the king's chamber and i think um cruising the nile and just the stops along the way and it was just magical and hearing sit at one night i was sitting on the deck of the ship and no one was around and you could hear a call to prayer on one side of the nile and on the other side and it just it just felt like spirituality you know, enveloping everything. It was beautiful. Everything, there were so many magical moments. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, hey, are you planning to go back? I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, yeah, so I'm, off, I'm off to Findhorn right now in Scotland, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm bringing warm wishes for thinking of Egypt as I okay, beautiful. bundle up. <laughs> All right, bundle but up. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great to meet you. Well, thank you. Likewise. So um, I am grateful that you're all here. Thank you for shining your light and whatever you do and carrying the magic of Egypt with you in your heart. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our, the illustrious Mary. And she's going to share some highlights of um, some details, some of the itinerary. There's some people here that are not here. They're here in spirit that want all the nitty gritty. So um, Mary's going to spell out some of the high, the most important things to focus on for us to prepare. And then we'll open it up for questions. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, how's that? Okay, Sounds Mary, it's all, it's all yours. Okay, thanks, Amira, and thanks everyone for showing up, especially people who are at airports out in beautiful hiking country and feeling a little bit under the weather. So you're all great. And, um, you know, I'm just so filled with enthusiasm, excitement, and um, passion. You know, I love Egypt, as you guys know, the ones who have been with me. And for people who are new, I just would like to invite you to listen along, whether you go to Egypt or not, um, you know, that's, a, that's your own personal and spiritual calling. But the idea is that we're doing this as a journey of love. Um, the name of the tour is Divine Union, the Heart of Egypt. And it's really interesting because last November when I was trying to come up with it, you know, because every, every tour has to have a name, it's just part of the advertising routine. But um, it came from, from my guides, who I call the Hathors, and it's all about opening the heart because we're at a time on the planet where it's all about not just balancing male and female energy, but really opening up to the divine union, which is that higher heart energy, emerging it with this idea that, you know, we can't really be on this planet the way we want to be unless our hearts are in the right place. And that was actually the teaching of ancient Egypt is that your heart had to be lighter than a feather because if it wasn't, well then, you know, you just ended up in the pit of no return. So 
this idea is what brought me to Egypt last November for the eclipse, um, amazing lunar eclipse on November 18th. And it was in the sign of Taurus, which is a sign of Hathor, the sign of Venus. All of this was kind of um, the divine perfect um, formula, the alchemy that got the last trip together and all the wonderful people that were on that trip. Um, this November, there's also a full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus um, between November 7th and 8th, depending on what part of the you're on. And the idea is that it's not just like it's part two or, or an ending or a finishing up or whatever. It's like more, it's an expansion. So what we're doing is we're expanding that energy, that heart energy, that feeling of, okay, if we're gonna live on this planet and we're gonna be loving and we're gonna get the most abundant um, way of being human, then let's just plug into the divine, I call it the, 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 the large generator of Egypt and just plug ourselves into that because that's where it's vibrating from. Um, it's like ground zero for all the uh, spiritual electromagnetic influx of energy that's coming in from the cosmos. There's also a lot of telluric energy that's available, earth energy, because we're grounding that in as we're working with the eclipse energy. So the astrology is a big part of why the timing of this trip is there um, at this point in time. It just so happens that it's also the timing of the opening of the new Grand Egyptian Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, also uh, the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tut's tomb. So once again, Egypt is celebrating as we go to Egypt um, because the last the Thanksgiving trip of November, 2021, our farewell dinner ended up being the big grand procession at Luxor Temple where we, they were opening the avenue of the Sphinxes. So we're, we seem to be in the midst of celebratory Egypt when we make our way over there. So that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm all for that. But the idea is that we're working with this energy that has to do with planetary and also cosmic energy and how we're grounding that and holding that in our physical bodies. It's very important now. So there'll be some prep work that we'll do before we go. Um, there'll be more calls. I'll be working with people individually um, if you so want to do that, um, whether it's through astrology readings or just talking um, you know, in general about your uh, past life connections, anything that comes up around how you feel about going to Egypt spiritually, um, that's pretty much what I do. I kind of work with us, and, I, and I'm sure Amira does also work with you before we go. In terms of the actual logistics of the trip, we're starting out um, in Luxor. So we're going to fly into Cairo. We're going to spend um, overnight in Cairo, and then we're going to fly down to Luxor. So we have some quality time in Luxor before the actual uh, cruise. That's going to give us a chance to go to Dendera Temple, the Temple of Hathor, which to me is one of my favorite um, places in Egypt. And that's where we're going to experience that uh, divine energy of the feminine. It's like really working with the mystery school of the Hathors there, which has a lot. She has a lot to do with sound and music, aromatherapy. And, it's, you know, I call it the home of the blue lotus mysteries because there's so much about the ancient blue lotus and how that was used in aromatherapy and a lot of the teachings having to do with uh, jesus and mary magdalene they do somehow intersect there at dendera so i'll be talking a lot about that on the trip also um we'll have some quality time in karnak temple which is uh, a little bit ahead of the actual cruise itinerary so that we can spend more time seeing some and, and get some of that private time that Lane was talking about in Karnak. Then on the cruise, we are on the Nile, which is amazing. Um, I've had some of the most incredible dreams of my life just sleeping on, the, on those cruises as we're um, going through the chakras of the Nile, the temples. Each temple is connected to um, a star pattern and each uh, temple is connected to one of our chakras. So that's th those are some of the mystery school teachings that I've been taught and we'll be doing a lot of that kind of work. In a, in a large um, 
I want to say in a touristic situation, not necessarily large, but we have to find our nooks and crannies and Lane and Pam and Paula and Linda are, you know, got to be pretty expert at doing all this because you kind of like ebb and flow when there's people and then you just kind of move to where it's quiet and we do manage to find our private time, even though we don't do it with bells and whistles so everyone notices us. Um, but it's one of those things now where, given the confines of um, modern day Egypt, we're doing this a little bit, you know, undercover in terms of the, the spiritual work. Now, in the private time is totally different. One of the reasons we, um, you know, by private time, because that's what we do. We're booking it um, so that no one is in the Great Pyramid except our group, and no one is down at the paws of the Sphinx except our group. So we have two hours inside the Great Pyramid. Um, they I just open. Want the to say it's highly exclusive. Not everybody, everybody listen here that knows that, but this is highly exclusive, and you know, it, like Mary has to book it a year ahead, practically, right? Just about, yeah. especially since it's going to coincide with the opening of the Grand Museum. So we're going to be up there with probably, um, I mean, there could be presidents, VIPs. I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a pretty interesting time to be in Egypt, which, you know, is just par for the course now for me. You know. But the idea is when we do our private time, there's no one else in these spaces except us. And sometimes even the Egyptian guide doesn't go with us. It's just us. And um, maybe they, they might send an inspector or a guardian just to make sure that we're safe and you know, no one falls down or you know, trips or something like that. But other than that, um, you know, inside the King's Chamber, we can we've done sound work, we can tone. You're, you're allowed to go inside the um, sarcophagus, which actually um, is not a sarcophagus in the sense that it never held a dead body, but it was there for initiates. So you're allowed to be in there respectfully for two hours. So that's a nice time period for people to be able to meditate on their own and or do group work. Um, it, whoever shows up in the group, that's how we you know, gauge how that private time is going to be used. They also open the Queen's Chamber, which is very special because that's the chamber of Isis. And so that I think, you know, I think of that as the womb chamber, the rebirthing chamber, where we get to really connect with our with our soul self. Then we make the ascension up into the King's Chamber. So that's a good two hours. And that will be in the very early morning of November 7th. After the King's Chamber will come out of the Great Pyramid and then we'll go down to the Paws of the Sphinx and spend another two hours at the Paws of the Sphinx for sunrise on November 7th. It's really magical to be there. You can't even imagine what it's like to be at the Paws of the Sphinx. But if you really want to get sort of a cinematic idea, if you haven't yet seen the new Death on the Nile movie, go see it because there's one scene where Hercule Poirot is sitting right at the paws of the Sphinx and he's staring up at the face. And a lot of it, um, you know, that a lot of that movie's computer generated, but there's something about that scene that it's just, it, it, it just gives me the chills anyway. So if you really want to kind of get a movie feeling of what that's about, you can see that movie. But when we're there, um, you can get so close. I mean, it's almost like you can feel the beating heart of the Sphinx. And we're there quietly. I mean, there's not a lot of um, noise on the plateau that early in the morning. So you do have a time to just really sit there. And the last, when we were there last November, um, our friend Stephanie brought a beautiful um, musical instrument similar to a harp, and she played it at the pause of the Sphinx. And everyone there said, that they felt like there were angels singing. And I mean, it was just it was just very magical. And so again, whatever the group brings to the occasion is kind of the vibration and sets the tone, but it's always beautiful. And I really feel that this eclipse is giving us, it's like, like an extra um, oomph, an extra frequency 
input, if you will, to be able to move forward into the next few years, because on planet Earth, we need people, we need bodies, we need human bodies that are holding this frequency, like human acupuncture needles. And then as you go out into your life, and you work with people, and you do your healing work, or whatever type of work you do, that resonance is with you, it's part of you. And so we're working up to that through the whole trip. And by the time we're at that um, stargate, if you will, of the Sphinx and the Great Pyramid, you're ready for it. And so it's, it's, it's even the people who have done it um, before, each time there's a new nuance because the frequency is different. It's a little bit different, even though the eclipse is in the same sign, everything else has moved and things are changed and you've changed. So it's never about repeating the same old thing. There's always something new about Egypt and people always say to me, and I'm sure they say to Amira as well, how can you go so many times? Like what, you know, what, what's with it? You know, it's like you spend your whole life over there. But the idea is there is, um, it's a living, breathing parallel reality. And if you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear it, it opens up for you. And then you become part of this movement that's all about energy and light and you know we all talk about light workers and and what we're doing on the planet but this is really um it's kind of like where the graduates go to um hang out you know so so it's always enjoyable and if you've never been to egypt before the experience is um personal so i don't like to say oh well you know you're going to feel this you're going to feel that but the one thing i can um guarantee is that you will feel something and that it's truly amazing because your own past life stories come up your own connections to not just egypt but other places come up because egypt is like having this magic um, atm card that opens up a lot of spiritual experiences so if you're willing to be on the spiritual experience path then of course Egypt is where you wanna go. Now people go to Egypt and they're just tourists. They just take pictures and kind of walk around and check it off their bucket list. And, and that's cool too. I mean, Egypt has a lot of fun things and beautiful temples and you know just lots of camels to ride and have fun on and many things to buy as we all know. But the idea is the spiritual initiatic path this is something that um, you know. some people go once in a lifetime, other people keep going, but once you're on it, it's like um, a magnetic field. And when you're in that magnetic field, it raises your vibration to the point where you feel really good. And therefore you're like, okay, well, that was good. Now I want more of that. And I want more of that. And that's kind of what happens if you're in Egypt, especially if you're with me. <laughs> I don't know how it's that works. remembering who you are. You know, it touches your soul. It touches your soul. And again, um, sometimes we look for, you know, uh, th the idea for me is that I like to explain it to people where they can kind of, you know, get a reality hit with it. Not because sometimes some of our spiritual uh, words sound a little bit, you know, out there to, to normal. I, mean, I don't want to say normal, but like the practical reality kind of grounded people and so there is the sense of working with magnetic magnetic energy over there and so once you touch in with that it really does move you in a physical way it's not just um a party in your head it's like you will you will feel something changing physically so all of that is um you know kind of the icing on the cake of what goes on but there is this interesting uh i want to say even educational part fun part where you're learning about the temples you're learning a lot about egyptology and having fun along the way and meeting new people i mean we spend a lot of time um doing things with egyptians and it's great because you know you get to see how other people live and how the world is not so um squared off and boxed off as a lot of people would like us to think that it is. I mean, every single time I've gone to Egypt and people have said, oh, are you safe? Is it safe over there? Is it safe? It's so safe over there that it makes coming back here seem silly <laughs> because over there, there's not the same sort of um, 
you know, fear about certain things and people are very open and they love, you know, they love Americans, they love tourists in general, but um, especially they really open their hearts to Americans because they understand how hard it is for us to get there and how long we have to fly. And, you know, I mean, it's different. If you live in Europe, you're there in like a couple of hours, but as you find out when you go to book your tickets, it takes us two days to get to Egypt. And so those are some of the, um, logistic things that I'll be working with people individually if you need help to get tickets or um, find flights and all of that. We, we do help you do that. So nobody's left on your own. Now, there's no group flight. However, um, I, as I said, I will help you find the right flights. And what we do is when you arrive in Cairo, um, as soon as you touch the ground, someone is there to meet you. So you're never alone. As soon as you get off the plane, we have our agent come and meet you and they will escort you through customs, pick up your luggage and take you to the hotel. Doesn't matter if you're arriving alone in the middle of the night, if you're arriving with four people, five people, it doesn't matter. You will be escorted and picked up. And um, I call it concierge service because once you're in Egypt, um, they take your bags and you really don't have to think about anything. Everything's you know, all you have to do is make sure you don't lose anything, but your bags are carried and, you know, you're, you're transferred from the airport to the buses, to the buses, to the sites, to the sites, to the boat. Um, you really are not ever left trying to figure out, well, what do I do next? Where do I go? Um, it's very much all done for you. You just show up. And people ask this a lot. Most of the meals are included. And on the uh, brochure and on the uh, itinerary that'll be posted on my website, I think it's up there now. And I, I'm, Amira's is also up. Uh, I think I tell you what days you have meals included. On the boat, there's three meals a day, plus high tea, and the food is excellent. Doesn't matter if you're uh, vegan or you have allergies. You just tell us what you need, and that food will be prepared for you that way as much as it is humanly possible. I have never had anyone complain about the food in Egypt. And I'm one of the pickiest eaters I know on the planet. And I managed to find really good things to eat. So I think that's something that um, you don't have to worry about once you're there. The idea of what to pack and all, uh, once you're registered, which means once you um, send in your deposit with the registration form, I will send you, and Amira will send you a registration uh, letter, or I call it a packet. It's not really a packet. It's more like a long email, but I, I really um, recommend that you print that out and keep it with you because that's going to have all the information on it that you might need to just look at, which is everything having to do with insurance, COVID regulations, um, what the weather's like, how much money should I bring, what's the exchange rate, are there ATM machines, all of that is already written out, so all you have to do is read it. Basically, the weather's going to be pretty decent. It's like um, Florida is pretty much in the winter, so it's sunny and hot during the day, a little bit cooler at night, maybe goes maybe the lowest would be 50, 50 degrees at night. So you're definitely going to be prepared for sunny weather. And you're going to be bringing, uh, and all this is going to be listed in the information, but a jacket because you'll be flying through, um, you know, our country and Europe to get there. So you'll, you'll have at least a jacket or a coat with you. You don't really need much, um, anything that you forgot or anything that you didn't bring, you can buy in Egypt. Egypt's one of the most modern um, countries in Africa. It's basically like being in the United States when you're in the city, you can find anything that you want in Cairo and now even Luxor. So you don't have to, you know, the only thing they don't have is vitamins. So if you need to bring a lot of vitamins, make sure you, you know, that's the top of your pack list because they don't have a lot of that there or health food. They have healthy food, but they don't have health food per se, the way we think of like protein bars and protein shakes and all of that. So if you need to bring any of that, you wanna put that on your to-do list to bring. Um, the registration um, is pretty straightforward on the registration form. There's uh, deadlines for, uh, there's two deadlines. After you send in your initial deposit, 
There's a July 15th deadline for 50%, which includes the deposit. And then September 1st is the final deadline for the payment because most tour companies want your tour completely paid 90 days in advance. Um, I get special treatment over there so we don't have to pay 90 days, but you know that deadline is pretty much within 30 days. So would, it would be good to just really stick. Now, what I do is if people have uh, personal payment plans that they need to work with. Um, don't bother Amira with that. Just let her know that you talk to me if you, you know, like if you need some extra time or you're paying a special way or something. If you need to talk about that, I, I don't ever say people, you know, don't go because you're worried about how and when you're going to pay. If you need to talk to me about the payments, just do that. Um, that's something that I've worked out for people before. As long as you pay for the trip, I'll work out however you want to do it. The thing is, we don't take credit cards. It, most of this, well, all of the money gets wired over to Egypt. So we take checks, money orders. We'll take PayPal with the 3% service charge and or Zelle, the bank to bank payments. So again, those are the personal questions that you can check with Amira or myself on. Um, or if there's anything that you want to know about financing personally, as I said, just check with me. But that registration form is very straightforward. And so if you even need to have one email to you, let us know. Um, The itinerary, again, is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to be labored to go over each and every day, but if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer anything you want to ask. So the passport is an important thing. It's The passport rules are, you know, kind of vague when you go online and kind of read what they say about having to have a passport, you know, everybody knows you, everybody knows they have one, but please check your passport before you register. And if you know, you're know you coming back, let's say um, November 8th, then you wanna make sure your passport is valid six months after November 8th. That's how you wanna be on the safe side. Six months after, they say departure, but sometimes you know that can be a little bit iffy if you're not really looking closely. So let's just say, oh, I'm coming back November 8th. I want my passport to be valid six months after November 8th. And if it's not, and you want to go, then get on the case now. Um, people were saying, well, you can't get passports. It takes six years, or I mean, I'm sorry, six months or whatever. My husband got his passport to go to Peru. Um, and it wasn't just one where he had to get it revalidated. He actually had his passport stolen, which, you know, was supposedly going to take a really long time. He got his passport in less than four weeks. So, and, it, and he didn't expedite it. It was just regular going to Broward County and doing the do. So if you think you need your passport, just go ahead. And it's a good thing to have a passport anyway. So make sure that that's uh, valid. And pretty much that's all the um, top of the head things that I can think of to tell you that are important right now and everything else. Um, I'm sure you'll ask me with questions. <laughs> so I, I just want to welcome Michael. I don't know if you've, you're muted, Michael, but welcome to the call. And uh, so let's open it for questions. Anybody have any questions that we didn't address or a curious curiosity that you have? This is your opportunity. Uh, I think everybody's muted. So if you'd like to speak, just go ahead and unmute. I'll start with the questions. Okay, um, go ahead, Lane. Is, is it the same guide? Is it Mohammed? Yes, it's our wonderful Mohammed. Who's just, Mohammed is that. He is wonderful. He's, he's excellent. He's, he's already, I mean, he's so, so excited that we're going to be doing it all over again. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, he's been, um, he's been excellent. And, um, He's also, oh, he's working with Sandy. Sandy's going back over um, next month. 
So there's he's 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 continuing um, with some of our people even uh, individually when they're, as they're traveling individually. Nice. So yes, beautiful. The, even the option we're, we're thinking of doing an option to uh, Luxor Abydos and Hergada after the main trip. If anybody still hasn't gotten enough, we won't be taking you to Fayum this time. But nice. <laughs> back down to Upper Egypt and then ending it um, at a beautiful resort in Hergada, if that's of interest. But again, that I'll be sending that information out to people as, you know, uh, as emails or posting it if you're uh, looking on Facebook and different places. Yeah. So Michael, did you, did you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lane, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We can go with Michael. He's brand new. Yeah. Well, he's probably been around a while, but here he is new to our group. Uh, Hi, Michael. How are you? Where are you calling from? Washington State. Great. And how did you find out about this group? Uh, it was an email from you, but I had uh, previously inquired after learning about it from Jeff Mara's podcast. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Well, welcome. And Thank you. so did you have any questions for us? I know you came in a little bit late. We've got this recorded, so I'm going to be happy to send it out to everybody. But did you have a burning question that you need us to answer for you or would like to speak about? Not particularly. I was just curious to get in touch and just hear uh, what I could more about it. Yeah, Mary, Mary did a great job. And so if that's okay with you, I'll just send you the replay. Certainly. Thank right. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I've, I've been with Mary before, but not Amira, and highly recommended. Highly, highly recommended. It is life changing, amazing. If you've never been to Egypt. Well, Je Jeff, uh, pardon me, Michael and Shirley heard about my story on Jeff Mara and that I had a near death experience in Egypt. And it oh. was on Mary's trip, but it was after I, I extended my trip for a week. So that's where it all began. So I think it sort of stirred the pot a wee bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was life changing every bit of it. No kidding. Yeah. How do you spell Mara? Because I would listen to the podcast. Oh, it, well, Jeff Mara, J E F F. M-A-R-A -A podcast and it's on YouTube. Okay. You can also go to my website, amirahall.com and, and I've got a numerous interviews there. Okay, you thank you. Story. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Amira's website is great. There's like so many things to like look at and listen to and it's really, it's really cool. So one thing I think I, I, I didn't mention, and I will just because, um, you know, things are changing so rapidly with the, with the COVID requirements in terms of travel. Um, internationally, it's still, for Egypt, you're still required to have the COVID test within 96 hours of arrival into Cairo. And so that's, um, that could change hopefully before October. And, it, and what I'll do is I'll keep sending out updates on that. And what I've done in the past is given a whole um, written kind of information about the COVID testing and how that works. The good news is to come back into the United States, you do not have to get the COVID test to come home. Oh, wow. nice. And I that out once I was already back at Atlanta airport, I got the COVID test in Cairo, um, you know, did the do and then come into Atlanta, have all my paperwork ready. And the, and the man said to me, oh, you don't need that. We just need your passport. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and so, I'm gonna hold the vision if you can all hold it with me that in November or in October, we won't need face won't masks need or a PCR test or anything else. Because it's, you know, as, as those who have been there, you know, last year, it was a little bit of a scramble to try to find the QR code and the PC. I mean, it was just, you know, it's just, it, it's not the test itself. It's the actual rigmarole that you have to go through to get it. But anyway, hopefully we won't have to do it again and we'll keep you posted all that and all that. But if you do, it's 96 hours, not 72. For the United States, they give us those extra hours because it takes us so long to fly there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And then Mary, I had another question. Is it the same boat, the Sinesta St. George? Yes, it is. I loved that boat. Oh my I, God. You and Linda, as I was talking to Mohammed about booking the cruises, because there were there were some other, you know, boats in um, you know, consideration. And then it just, you know, it was like by default, I said, you know what, everybody loves the Sinesta. It was there was enough room to just kind of like smooch around where we wanted to and it didn't feel crowded and I thought of you guys up there on the top deck enjoying the evening scenery I thought yeah well let's just do the semester again Yay. Good. and I want to just add that for anybody listening to this that hasn't seen what the cruise ships look like in Egypt on the Nile is these are not ocean liners this no. is a very soft, it's like being on a lake practically. And you're oh. on this gentle ride that you wouldn't even know you're on a boat sometimes, right? Am I correct? There's something about sleeping on the Nile that is just so peaceful and yes. so deep and so magical. And then to wake up in the morning because you have all the windows in your room and to see sunrise over the Nile and the farmers and the fishermen and the livestock and the birds. And it's like, nothing has changed in thousands of years. It's so You've beautiful. Even washing the clothes on the side of the- Yes, yes. Venues. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is, it's just a beautiful small ship. So you don't have thousands of people running around. Mm -hmm. And it's very, um, it's almost a feeling of being local, right? Like you're cruising through time. It's definitely, I think it's definitely feeling of cruising through time. And I, you know, some, some days it's like that feeling of just laying on your bed, like Lane said, and just watching the Nile go by where you don't even have to get up out of bed. <laughs> you just, to me, that's like the ultimate luxury. I thought, oh, this is what Cleopatra felt like. This is what had to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's beautiful. Yeah. So um, lapping it up. Just yeah, living in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's that's very special and then yeah there's this you know like um the smaller boats too the the felucas and the motor boats we take um motor boats a lot to get back and forth to the west bank when we're when we're sightseeing and it's fun because you know the guys play um the egyptian guys who are the captains they play music and everybody gets up and dances and you know has a good time it's like it's like the egyptians love to party mm -hmm. and so <laughs> the bumper boats yeah <laughs> linda's talking about the bumper boats the um so they love music and there's always something you know if you smile in egypt you get so much more than if you're walking around with a, with a mug on your face because egyptians love to laugh and so that's one of the things that i learned early on it's like you can you can you know be asked and demand things and if you're like you know, really tough and forthright, you're just going to have to wait in line. But if you smile and say, oh, please, you know, and, and just, just like come from your heart with them and, and just treat everything like it's fun, you know, wow, you get, you get taken care of right away. So um, it's, it's a different, very different mentality than we have here in the West. And so logic doesn't matter there. So people say to me all the time, well, why isn't it this way or why don't we just do that or it's like i say don't even ask because it doesn't matter you know <laughs> egyptian yeah. ways they've done it ancient for you're, centuries it's going to be that way yeah you're never going to get a straight answer mm -hmm. and you're never going to get the answer that you want so you might as well just and see you know this is where you learn to be very flexible and if you're a type a personality you know, Egypt kind of teaches you patience and, you know, how to surrender control and all of that. Um, now, having said that, you, you want to be grounded and you want to be in your body and present. But, you know, forget taking control of any situation or getting something done by sheer um, brute force, because it's not going to happen. <laughs> Even Just though the full moon is going to or the, is going to be in Taurus, huh? We're not going to push forward. No. The <laughs> moon is all about um, love and it's about working with sound and tone and just feeling the, the higher vibrations. And so the Taurus energy is going to keep us grounded 
and working with the earth. And I think that there's a lot of telluric movement that's happening on planet earth for many, many different reasons. But working with that at ground zero, the Great Pyramid is ground zero of land mass on the planet. So if you think of it that way, you're working with a huge amount of earth energy just by being there, just by showing up. And then you're talking about all the uh, cosmic and interstellar energy that's coming in with every blast of the sun, um, it seems like every day. So between all of that cosmic effluvia and, and the earth, it's like we're going to be positioned in a pretty powerful spot. So if you do any kind of spiritual work between and you're planning to go between now and October, do more of it, you know, walk more, do more physical exercise, drink more water, get your body in a really good shape. I don't mean that, you know, the kind of shape where you have to go win a weightlifting contest or anything, but the idea is that you want to feel that you're going over there in a grounded state so that even um, things like it's going to be different um, sounds, different culture shock, different, um, you know, the time difference is that your you know, body needs to catch up with jet lag and all of that. So the more prepared you are for that kind of trip, the better you are. And so, you know, especially right around the time before you leave, don't leave everything to the last minute so that you're all crazy the last few days and not sleeping and all of that. You want it like if you're thinking about going, even if you're not sure you're going, um, pretend that you are. You know, I, I call it the as if formula. And, you know, you kind of get ready as if you were going. And then the universe kind of helps you along then. It's like, okay, well. She looks really serious. He looks really serious about going. Let's, you know, let's put a little extra energy on, on that side of the plate to tip the scale so that maybe they will get that check to let them go, or maybe they will get that job, or maybe, you know, someone will watch the dog for them. So all these things come together once you put your intention out there. And so, again, it's a personal choice. And this is, I, I never have to cajole or convince anyone to go to Egypt. It's more like they come to me and tell me, Mary, I wanna go, I have to go now. This is the trip, I've been getting dreams. I've been having meditations. I've been throwing my cards and it's all about Egypt. I've been thinking about you know, ISIS and you know, my guides are telling me I need to go. You get the messages if the trip is for you and if the timing is right. Yeah. And it's all about divine timing. So we're, we're kind of, in this together as much as you need um, let's say the, the the coaching to get you on track Amira and I are available to you know lend an ear a hand whatever it is to uh, reinforce it for you but basically your guides are going to do the work for you and at the end of this month we have an eclipse we have the first of the um, eclipses of 2022 and it's a solar eclipse and so the solar eclipse in the sign of Taurus starts off the, the, the ball rolling with this Taurus energy. So I would suggest that if anyone really is interested in going, that you work with this eclipse energy because it's a new moon. It's about new beginnings. It's about planting the seeds and ask your guides to really give you the, um, it's almost like the green light to go. Like, what is it? What's the sign? What do I need? And only, you know, what the, what the, formula is for you to go and start asking start asking for that to come through and um yesterday um i met with Ms. Adaya and we had a beautiful conversation about all kinds of things and she asked me to bring her back a segment from uh egypt which i did and she sent me a picture of how she placed that in her her home and it's like there was just so much energy radiating from that particular um, statue that she put there and it's like yes it's like knowing that that kind of energy is the sign the signal that says okay you know what you're moving you're moving a little bit left of center to go and so whatever it is that you need in your life to start that um don't be afraid because this jupiter neptune conjunction that we just started um april 12th is all about the dream it's about what can you do in your life to make it happen it's not about being a bliss bunny and just you know kind of hoping on a you know wishing on a star but it, 
knowing or believing in your heart, it's never going to come true. This is about, okay, what are the practical steps I can take to make what I want happen in a good way? You know, not, you know, not bullying anybody to get it, not hurting anybody and not hurting yourself. But this is like, okay, expansion. The, the, the rule of the universe over the next couple of years, although if you look at it from 3D, it looks like it's re retraction. It's not, it's expansion. And so what are we expanding into? How can we be more of ourselves? And so, yes, we're going to get glimpses of that um, all throughout uh, the next few months. And so if going to Egypt is something that really feels right to you, then start expanding on that. Because as Amira said earlier, it will expand you. And all of these um, lovely people that have been sharing their stories, it's like not one person said, oh my God, I never want to go again. It was awful. It's the opposite. It's like something inside, especially you know, I believe it's the heart expands and really moves you forward in your life. And so you, of course, we can do that without going to Egypt, but it's more fun to do it and go to Egypt. <laughs> so um, anyway, I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but thank you for the question, whatever it was. <laughs> I, well, hey, we're, we're a little bit past the hour. I know we started late. So unless anybody else has any questions, Mary, do, are you okay with uh, closing the call tonight? Right, I want, if anybody has any questions. Yeah, um, any let's please, anybody got something burning that they need to have answered? Related or unrelated? Can I ask you a question for those that have been more than once to Egypt? How, okay, I'm just gonna ask, how do you survive the length of time it takes to get from San Francisco to Cairo. It's last time I flew to Europe, um, it was, I just did not feel well, like because of the airplane. And I'm just, you know, I know like the idea is to get in the best shape, you know, healthy as possible, but um, it's just kind of off putting. Like when I really look at how, how long and arduous that, that trip is, so. Just asking. Well, I flew from Los Angeles to Egypt. So does that count? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm looking for tips on how to how to how to have that kind of um, what do you call it? The endurance you need to to make that long of a trip. It seems. Uh, well, you, first of all, Shirley and I know each other and she's working with me and, and Shirley, you're way ahead of yourself because I know that you can do it. But the other thing is I took one step at a time. You know, I'm not looking forward, quite honestly, to the trip back because things, so many things have changed. There is no direct flights right at this time, you know, and that's how I would have preferred to go. But Quite honestly, I think that's better because if you have legs, you can, meaning you transfers, you can get off the plane, walk around and then go, great. I got one leg down and then there <laughs> for the next leg. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like you don't eat a whole buffet in one bite. You know, it's going to be a process. And I think as you pack and you prepare and you get your mind wrapped around really going, the trip is the least of it. That might be your stopping point at this point, but I think as we step past that and realize there's so much more and, you know, if you want, we can meet, you know, in, in Denver or New York and go with a buddy and I, I can't sit and sleep in a in flight. I'm up and walking every half hour or hour. So get an aisle seat, you know, that's my, my mechan mechanism to cope yeah. with. Yeah, I get an aisle seat and I walk all night long. Uh huh. Okay. Can I, I just add too that I, I agree with Amira that um, if you if you can travel with a buddy system, even if you meet, um, because there's only so many points to meet, the you know only so many junctures of airports that take you to Cairo. So some people met in Paris, some people met in London, um, depending on flying from and what airline and that's a good thing one once we know who's going I help arrange that so people you know we put everybody and we had um I think it was near 25 people on in the last November trip and we had people flying together sometimes there were six seven um I think there's only one or two people who actually flew by themselves so people 
came into Cairo, you know, with, with their people that they met en route or with friends that they were already flying with. And the other thing is if you're using, if you have any kind of credit card and you're using miles or whatever, um, to pay for your tickets, check and find out from the airline uh, what um, airline um, lounges are available to you because some credit cards allow you to use a lounge if you pay like a $35 fee and all that, the, all that's available on the internet. You just look up air, you know, airline lounges in Denver or here or there and you can buy a day pass. And if you're stuck in an airport for more than two hours, which I've, you know, spent a lot of time in airports over the past couple of years. Um, I have definitely used the lounges. That's what saved me, especially I flew all through all through COVID. I went back and forth to Egypt and, um, you know, the lounges were really saving grace because a lot of the airports weren't open. Parts of the airports weren't open international um, airports, but the lounges always were. So that's something you could investigate and it makes that, um, you know, it's just easier if you can. So, so if you pay, you know, thirty-five or fifty dollars or wherever it is, and they allow you to use the J Pass, I would do it because once you're in that lounge, um, the refreshments are free. You can sit in a real comfortable chair. You can, you know, take. Some of them even have showers and bathrooms and stuff where you could, you know, spruce up. It. You just have to do a little bit of legwork on what the actual accoutrements of flying are right now. Being in the plane, I agree with you, is not 100% fun, but there's things along the way that you can do to make it a little bit worthwhile. And then you just think about, you know, how great it's gonna be when you get off that plane in Cairo, so. <laughs> and all the sleep that you're gonna have on the Nile. <laughs> so I would suggest, and again, it's a little premature because we don't know yet who's coming in or not. Um, find out you know what people are leaving from your area i'll help you with that information amira will help you and then you can kind of you know plan to to travel together i think that's a good we will do it surely <laughs> we'll see other so there's other factors involved but i thought i'd ask that question just to kind of like i know believe me every excuse and resistance and story that we tell ourselves it all comes up and this is also part of the journey is for uh -huh. you to sidestep your story you know what you tell yourself or what you make believe and how yeah. you're receiving something in your mind when it may or may not be true yeah okay yeah, and embrace it. it and the possibilities and the wonder and the magic and the yeah. it is I would just like to <laughs> that's always unfolding. I, I would like to add that every time I went to Egypt, there was all that resistance and the fear and like just things overwhelming, like, oh my God, I'm not sure I really want to do this. But when you push through it and you're there, you're like, oh my God, I'm so glad I went through that and I'm here because it's life-changing. It's really worth meeting your resistance and embracing it and transmuting it because it's a life-changing experience. And you know, Lane, I think over the years of everybody that I have met on the journeys to Egypt, everybody has some resistance that they have to face before like the water heater breaks, you know, and the next day you're leaving or something and, you know, <laughs> and hire a plumber and lock the door and leave it to them, you know, and just get on the plane. It depends on how you choose to embrace this opportunity of the resistance right. teaching <clears throat> us about ourselves. <clears throat> yeah, fascinating. Not always fun, <laughs> but it can be if we allow it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So it's 11, 11 or 11, 1, 11 that we've been on the call. So mm -hmm. I think that's a poignant moment to, uh, to say adieu and thank you everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me thank and Mary you. and each other. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank we'll you. be in touch. Many blessings. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Okay.